Welcome back guys to Flatline Debt Nation. If you're new here, I'm Dakota and today we're going to be unboxing some really expensive but really awesome IAG parts for the RS. You guys are new to the channel. Well, stick around. I like to uh, drive my Subaru and have fun with it. Because of all that fun, I rolled a rod bearing a couple months back at a track day, got the oil too hot, and spun a rod. Now, was it my Subaru's fault or my fault? Probably my fault. I was getting comfortable on track and I kept pushing it harder lap after lap. I didn't have the equipment to keep the oil cool enough to keep pushing that hard. Insert all those parts back there. I went ahead and got some IAG parts for my basically junkyard JDM engine. Funny thing is, those parts cost just as much as that engine. Now, I'm thrifty and I got a deal on this stuff. I saw Black Friday they had a deal as well, but I got these a different way. I didn't steal them, that's, that's not what I'm saying. I just got them a different way, all right? Don't ask questions. Let's get to unboxing these things. I'm gonna compare them to the stock STI pan, because that's what I was running on my car. I have some equal length headers, so I needed the pan clearance, that's why I was running an STI pan. We'll talk about the differences and install them onto the new used engine. You know, it's not a traditional unboxing video because I kind of already opened some of it. I had to make sure it was the right stuff I got. So, we'll start with the big boy first. Ooh. Brand new IG baffled oil pan with the cooling fins. Uh, this is kind of what sold me with going with IG was the cooling fins on the bottom. Just adds a little bit of extra cooling. Subarus come with that stock oil cooler that's bolted up above your oil filter, but you know, it really doesn't keep up for track use, at least what I've seen and experienced. So I got this. They have two different options. There's the street and then the competition. This is the competition. If you can see in there, there's actually little rubber doors that keep the oil from pushing back up and then going onto your crank and everything else. Um, there's some other stuff in here that I'll actually show you too. Um, but yeah, I'm not, I don't know how I feel about the rubber. Hopefully it holds up, like it doesn't break down over time. I'm assuming they've done their research and it's going to hold up and not cause issues because that'd be really bad, you know, if they like break off and get sucked up in your pickup tube. But I'm assuming they've done plenty of testing. They seem like they are the best at what they do for Subarus. Pan seems great. I mean, nice, nice machining. I'm not a machinist by any means, but it looks nice to me. I'll, uh, I'll do some close-ups in a second. Let's unbox the rest of this stuff. It does come with some gaskets and mounting hardware, all the other fun stuff to put it in the car. Doesn't come with a sticker though. I was expecting a sticker. I want my money back. I haven't opened this one yet, so curious, curious. Oh, oh, that is, that's sweet. It's fancy. It's way too fancy for me. Look at that thing. That is, that's cool. That's pretty cool. Hopefully it works. You know, it looks cool. Should work, I mean. Last but not least, I opened this up, but I didn't actually unwrap it. I just wanted to make sure it was the right thing. And the windage tray to go along with everything. So this is gonna bolt to the block and it's gonna be right above your crank to stop oil from actually splashing. Stock one, definitely not going to work with the new pan. You need the extra clearance for this. Um, quite a bit different. This has got the nice little baffles, I guess you'd call it a baffle, to help the oil flow out back into the pan. Um, doesn't let it slosh back up and hit the crank. Um, oil going on your crank and your crank going through the oil is bad. It causes cavitation and it 
makes extra work for your engine because you're having to push through the oil. You want your oil to flow through the engine really nicely. So this all helps the oil flow nicely, keeps it cooler, adds extra capacity, which is really nice. It's always irritating when you buy a five quart jug and you gotta, you know, hopefully not put the whole thing. I always put the whole thing in. You're gonna burn it off anyway. Let's give you guys a close up because I know you don't like looking at my ugly mug. Give you a kind of side by side comparison of the stock parts versus the IAG stuff. Again, um, IG, it's actually taller if you can see that. Probably where you get your extra capacity from. Baffolding, again, little rubber pieces. This is, again, the competition pan, not the street pan. So hopefully there's no issues. I'm assuming these, these flap. Ooh, yeah, those flap inwards. So oil goes around the outsides through the sides here um, and then flows through. These little flappy deals open up. Oil goes into the bottom and your pickup tube sucks it up compared to your stock pan which just has this little bit of stamped steel around the outsides that keep the oil from kind of sloshing back up so serious piece of equipment here compared to the stock pan which is good that's what i'm going for i'm going to try to make this 800 hundred dollar engine last um, quite a while while pushing 350 wheel again kind of just looking around the pan nice fins i really like that the drain is on the bottom of it because then everything will flow out especially when you have your car jacked up in the air and your drain is pointed towards the back you're going to get everything out of that pan whereas the stock oil pan you can actually see i have the stock bolts in there you have all that oil because the the drain is right there it's actually on the side of the pan somewhat and you've got the bung that's welded to it so you're going to have like a 16th of a quart left in the bottom of your pan, whereas this pan, you're going to get it all out. I'm not sure how particular people are with getting all the oil out. I think it really should mostly come out, especially if you have any sediments or crap in the bottom of the pan. It's probably going to be at the bottom of the pan and you have a chance of sucking that back up. Not going to be a problem with the IG pan. The other cool thing is the gasketing. Hopefully it installs nice. It seems like a good idea. They have this machined out. So you can just put the little rubber gasket around the outside and then bolt it to your engine instead of using gray Permatex like you have on here. This can be an issue because if you put too much of this gray Permatex on, it can mush out, fall in there, and then get sucked up in your pickup tube. That's not good. Um, that can destroy engines. So that's the pans side by side. Now for the pickup tubes. Again, this thing is pretty serious. Nicely TIG welded. It is TIG welded all over the place. So they really did a good job on this thing. It should hold up really good. Not have any problems with cracking like you would with your stock one. These are prone to crack where they're brazed together. Just the vibrations. This was a brand new one I was using so I wasn't really worried about it cracking. I'm not sure if, you know, it looks like they're the same height. Same height wise, you can't really see, it's hard to show. Um, the only difference was the screening and how it actually flows in there. This is bigger. Hopefully that helps with oil flow getting in there. This again comes with the hardware and gasket to put on the end and bolt it in your block. On to the windage trays. I'm assuming you have to run an IAG one if you're going to be running a competition pan like that just because this will actually sit down into here. I don't remember which way it goes, but this will sit down into there. Whereas the IG one needs the extra clearance to get above all of the baffling that is in the competition pan. This one definitely seems like it could catch more oil because you only have one point that the oil is going to drain down back in. Whereas this one, it's going to flow out. Now, these are only my opinions. I know nothing about fluid dynamics and that kind of stuff. So if you guys are experts in the subject, please comment below whether or not I'm making any sense or this makes sense to you guys. But... It looks and in theory seems like this is going to be a benefit for me and what I do with the car. It sees a lot of track time. I'm not nice to it. If you guys have seen any of the other videos, I'm not nice to this car. I like to drive my stuff. I like to enjoy it. There's no point in having a garage princess. I say we throw it on the engine. See how it looks on there. That'll be a wrap.
gonna show you guys this so when this engine blows up I have an excuse. This is the big thing about JDM engines. If you guys didn't see my JDM video that I just did, um, go back and watch that. But this is one thing I hate. The JDM engines come over from Japan, they're on a boat and they get wet. And this is just from getting wet. Like this is gross. Now, it probably doesn't affect anything. I mean, I put the LS and the Z and that thing was absolutely disgusting. Oil buildup and that kind of crap, but it's really gross. Um, it's kind of scary. Definitely going to change the oil a few times. Just gonna run some basic conventional stuff through it and get it, this all cleaned up. Kind of sucks I'm putting such a nice oil pan on such a piece of junk, but I really wanna see how far I can push this $800 engine, how long I can make it last, making a decent amount of horsepower. Might seem dumb, but you know, I'm here to do dumb things for you guys at my own expense. So let's get this taken off and we can start putting on the new stuff. I'll probably clean this up just a little bit. Got this kind of cleaned up. Windows tray is in there, fits good. But for the first thing I don't like about this pan is you have to use all these little spacers. And that's because they designed this pickup tube to work with a stock pan and their competition pan, which is great. I mean, then they only have to make one pickup tube, but then they add all these spacers and to me, this adds a failure point for your oiling system because now you have two gaskets, whereas you normally have one. You've got a lot of extra parts here. It's probably not a big deal. Um, the only This is the only issue I really see with this whole kit is all the extra little spacers. They are nice enough. They include little O-rings to hold the bolts in place so you can get all this in there. That's pretty smart, um, but it does add an extra failure point for your actual pickup tube if the O-rings ever go out. I've never heard of it happening, um, but just uh, kind of my thoughts on it. Otherwise, so far so good. Directions are online. Everything's pretty straightforward so far. There's torque specs and everything in there. This baby's all snugged down, good to go. Now it's time to put the pan on. I got the little gasket already in there. Uh, the seam is right there, so I'm gonna put a little dab of gray Permatex like they say in the directions, right there. I would do it anyway. Look at that fancy thing. It's like putting lipstick on a pig. <laughs> Last thing to install is the plug, or in my case, is my oil temperature sensor. This is great because I always had this on the top of the block. Now it's actually gonna be in. Oh no, it's probably broken. No. I always had this on the top of the block and probably isn't the most accurate reading of what your temperature is in your oil. So. This will actually go straight in there, thread in, which is super cool. I like that about this pan. I really like this bottom drain. This is nice. And there we go. This is 100% installed, minus the dipstick tube. They did include some O-rings for that. So once I get this thing flipped back over, um, I'll install those, but you guys don't need to see that. I hope you guys got something out of this video. You enjoyed it and helped you out in deciding if you wanna spend as much as you spent on your engine on an oil pan setup. It's probably worth it. This kit is nice, includes everything you need, everything's really well thought out. 
There's a toll free number on their website. They seem really active on social media. So it seems like a company that's gonna back their stuff. Stay tuned because I have some more stuff coming for the car, some more upgrades, or maybe a little more power, a little, little more sp sprinkle of sauce, sprinkle the sauce in there. Changing up the tune and everything. I'll do a dyno video and all that fun stuff on it. So for now, that's it. And we'll see you guys next time. <laughs>